Hey guys, Dan Rice, FHCOutdoors.com. Today's video is part two. It's a follow-up to my family's John Boat to Bass Boat project that uh, originally uploaded to YouTube in June or July of 2010, and um, it's nearing just about 300,000 views. And uh, I've gotten so many questions, a lot of thumbs up, a lot of people, uh, you know, congratulating my family on doing something like this because not only was it a great family project. I uh, just came together and we still fish out of it today and so interesting story is my mom bonused uh, one year when I was about 12 or 13 years old. I'm 31 today so this gives you a little bit of idea and uh, instead of using that money for the house or something for my mom and dad they actually went out and bought me uh, and my family a John boat and uh, I was always been big into fishing. Uh, my parents uh, you know fly fished and, and stuff like that in Montana growing up and so, uh, you know, getting into bass fishing was a little bit different. Uh, but with that being said, you know, this, this whole boat project really came about many, many years ago when my mom first allowed us to even get this uh, John boat that they purchased. And so, with that being said, I've had a lot of questions. Let's get to it. Um, you know, if you're looking for part one, you want to see exactly what was done uh, with photos, I have the link here on the video. Uh, but this is more of a follow-up. A lot of things that I didn't include that a lot of people have asked questions about, um, all the way from you know the uh, the trolling motor mount, uh, all the way through to the back um, with the guide posts, and, and a lot of questions about motors too. So if you have any questions, please post down below. You can always visit me on my website fhcoutdoors.com and contact me through there, and I'll reply. I've replied to hundreds and hundreds of emails regarding the John Boat to Bass Boat project. All right, so starting with the trailer, we did add a few feet on the tongue as an extension. Makes it a lot easier backing up. Also loading, unloading in shallow water, and some of the lakes that we fish are really, really shallow, so it's, it's nice to have the added length. You can see the uh, tongue jack there that we added. Really easy, simple to install, fairly cheap at 25, about 30 bucks. Uh, we also added the, uh, the winch strap here. Comes with the mount and the strap, really easy to install as well run you about $20, $25, uh, generally speaking. Um, we did add a spare tire carrier here, military style, screws on and off, it is locked, so either way, you know, a thief can't get it off. Uh, really nice, up, out of the way, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, we did add the uh, material here that you see, the light color material, onto the bow stop. And this material is actually what they used to make old um, dividers out of, kind of uh, you know in, a, in a, a bathroom stall and so the material is really thick it's easy to clean and it's slick and so with that being said we did use it here for the bow stop of course but we also used it on the bunks and so the boat slides up and down really really easily doesn't necessarily match you know with the green and black uh, but the material is durable it's, it's virtually unbreakable and so that's why we used it um, going down the trailer here of course we painted it everything was sanded and painted it's pretty rough right now. We do trailer the boat down miles and miles of dirt roads because my parents live in a rural area. And so with that being said, the one thing that has not held up are the fenders. And that's because they're obviously, um, they're pretty brittle, um, not only with their age, but just some of the material that they're made out of. Um, and so this is my next project. I'm gonna go ahead and get some new fenders put on the boat. Um, we did get some new wheels and tires, purchase those from, um, uh, a local trailer store um, and I have gone through one set of tires already in in about three and a half years and so you can pretty much plan especially with dirt road use uh, the tire lifespan reduces uh, the more you travel on graveled roads it just kind of eats them up but with that being said the wheels uh, have been great and uh, of course we um, prep and service the um, the, uh, the axles every year and so of course repacking your bearings doing all that stuff you need to do it every year um, also here the guide posts um, this is just a piece of PVC pipe and also a cap and a lot of what I've seen a lot of people do is they secure these down well what happens when you do that is the you know if, if the boat makes contact these aren't able to roll and so what you want is you want them able to roll because when you go to load your boat it just kind of makes it easier if they can roll. Um, you don't necessarily need to secure them to the frame of the trailer because all you got to do is drill a hole in your cap and that releases any pressure. Um, they stay on even in the water because of this hole. And so really cool, you can actually slide them on and off if you really wanted to. 
but they're physically impossible to come off when you're traveling down the road or anything like that. Um, it's pretty nice. Also added some LED trailer lights. Uh, we rewired the whole entire trailer and so it's pretty nice having these. They are submersible, uh, no more plugging, unplugging um, with some of the old light bulbs uh, that we used to have to do. Uh, so the LEDs make it really nice. Um, you know, beyond energy efficient, the, um, you know, they're submersible. So um, moving around here, this is uh, an old Sea King 15 horsepower motor. Got this from my grandfather. We've had two motors on this boat since the actual John Boat to Bass Boat modification. Uh, we had a 15 horsepower Johnson, which ran awesome. Sold that, bought a 20 horsepower um, and uh, didn't really like that motor. It was, it was a little bit older. Um, it ran great, just didn't necessarily like it. We picked this up from my grandfather and bought it from him uh, because he's not really able to fish any longer. So this runs perfectly. It's been serviced here locally by uh, Sean Bongers at Elephant Boys. If you're in the Spokane area, I would totally recommend that guy. Um, moving around, the, uh, the gas can here, of course, the transom was uh, built with aluminum angle. We painted it to match the boat. Of course, there's no problem with strength there. Uh, Bass Pro Shops seats and pedestals. This is how we mounted everything down. Um, right now, the boat's pretty dirty since we do go down dirt roads, uh, but everything's solid so far. You know, we're talking uh, four years later and everything is still solid. Um, you really can't, uh, you know, can't complain about that too much. The seats are pretty Pretty uh, dingy looking, I'd say for the most part, um, but the boat is stored outside a lot. Um, so with that being said, there is gonna be some UV damage. Um, but most people that have garages, um, like my wife and I, we just bought this house. It's nice because we can keep it inside, um, you know, but like we said, it's been stored outside a lot. Um, the floor still holds up, you know, is, is holding up great. The Herculiner uh, is fairly easy to clean. It's held up, it hasn't chipped at all. Um, you can kind of see here the layout of the boat. We do keep an oar with us just in case, you never know. Um, and moving up here to the deck, of course, we still have our uh, first aid kit, life jackets, all that sorts of thing. This is the battery tray. Um, this is actually my second battery. We uh, went with a Cabela's Pro AGM battery this time. Um, and really, really holds a great charge. The AGM advanced glass mat is much different than a standard battery, so that's another topic you can research for your own modification. But uh, I would definitely recommend the Cabela's AGM battery. Here on the front, you know, the front pedestal, we do wish that this was a little bit longer. Um, you know, it's a little bit awkward sitting on this chair and having your, your foot if you're a tall person. I'm six foot two. Makes it a little bit awkward, but I stand most of the day, anyways. And back up front here, the trolling motor mount with the Minn Kota, 40 pound edge, uh, foot controlled motor, and uh, it's been terrific. I, I'll tell you what, I can't, I can't praise Minn Kota enough. This thing goes anywhere in this boat. Um, and that brings us back up to the front here. So that just gives you a rundown of the overall boat project and what it looks like after four years. Uh, really the only negative thing that we really found throughout the entire project was we wish we would have used a little bit lighter material on the front deck or went with a little bit thinner diameter of diamond plate because it is so heavy. Uh, with that being said, the boat is solid. Um, taking out the seats in that styrofoam absolutely had no negative effect. We did replace it underneath the floor. And so, you know, if you do things right, if you take your time, and if you stick to your budget, I'd say this project of creating a John boat into a bass boat can be one of the most uh, fun ways to enjoy bass fishing. It's not a tournament rig. It's not something that you're going to go out and compete out of. Um, you can definitely add your live wells and do things like that and fish small, you know, fish small John boat tournaments. Um, but for the most part, this is one of those rigs um, that we've really found out we catch a lot of big fish out of. We're silent. It, it can go in inches of water and um, it's just been a, a great, great boat. It's been reliable. And the, the amount of money that we put into it uh, is probably the biggest question. Everyone wants to know how much did it cost, um, but it's really insignificant in the fact that, you know, we used aluminum. There's no wood in this boat. Um, it's, uh, it's all made to be durable, uh, easy to wash, and, and that's really it. That was the whole point of doing this. 
Um, we wanted to bass fish comfortably. Um, you know, while we look into a, a brand new bass boat, and, and I am you know, contemplating a couple different brands, this boat will never leave the family because for the simple fact we can fish small lakes, we fish rural areas, and uh, it suits the job just fine. Um, total cost, I would probably say it's, it's roughly around you know, the $2,500 mark. Everything from your winch and you know, the tongue jack all the way through to the paint, the materials, aluminum, you know, that's, that's really just the bare minimum because you know, we're talking about a trolling motor, a fish finder, motors, and, and just there's a lot of cost involved. And um, you know, it's a fun project. It's something that I would really recommend. And even if you don't have a dad that can help you like I did, I'm very, very fortunate. There's a lot of people out there willing to help and uh, make something like this truly unique for yourself. And so, um, you know, grab a friend, grab a buddy, and uh, get yourself a cheap jumbo and turn it into something truly unique and one of a kind. If you have any questions, please post down below. Dan Rice, once again, my website is fhcoutdoors.com. You can contact me anytime. I love to write about fishing. I love to help people catch more and bigger fish. And uh, we'll see you next time.